Welcome to the crash course of basics of asynchronous programming for Playwright with C-Sharp.net framework development. So this video is part of the greater course available in Udemy on automation framework development with Playwright in C-Sharp.net and I have released just this section alone as a free course in YouTube so that you can watch and learn how important asynchronous programming is for Playwright in C-Sharp.net coding. So before we start learning the playwright in csharp.net itself, it is super important to learn asynchronous programming because asynchronous programming is the foundation of the playwright code development. And you know that playwright itself is an asynchronous library. So what is this asynchronous programming? So this asynchronous programming is a programming paradigm that allows a program to perform other tasks while waiting for long running operation to complete. In other words, if you have a program which is going to take quite a long time to execute, you can't really block the other task to complete because those tasks might be faster. In real world, if you can see in a web page, you can see that there may be multiple different widgets and each and every widget may be performing certain operations calling different APIs and some of the widget may be slower. So you can't just block the whole web page because one of the widget is slower and you can't hang the whole website and it will make a whole user experience quite terrible. In order to make all these operations to be more seamless to the user or asynchronous to the user, we need to use what is called as the asynchronous programming language. Well, as that said, asynchronous programming was introduced in C Sharp in version 5.0 in 2012. And from then, asynchronous programming has gained quite a lot of popularity among community and a lot of companies and toolings and even libraries are all using asynchronous programming code. So async or async is the way that people talk about this particular terminology that you are seeing over here, spoken in combination of async await in C Sharp which has enabled a more natural and efficient way to write asynchronous programming code. It's becoming a core part of modern c -sharp development and is widely used for network calls, IO operations, and other asynchronous tasks. So this is how the asynchronous is getting quite a lot of popularity in c -sharp world. And this is exactly what led many of the popular libraries in c .net to be moved toward the asynchronous programming. Something like the HTTP client has introduced an async first library in .NET 4.5, replacing the older synchronous web client for HTTP client. We'll be seeing a demo about this in this particular video, but this is how it has transformed. Similarly, there are many other streams or file libraries have moved to async programming because that has led the faster IO operation while using them within our code to improve the product efficiency. So why async is important in Playwright? You know that Playwright is an async library. All the methods in Playwrights are async in nature. For example, even you know that this create instance of Playwright is using an await playwright.create async method. So this is how you use to create an Playwright instance in c .net. Similarly, if you wanna create a new browser, you'll be using await playwright.chromium.launch async. Similarly, you create a page and also you perform many different operation. And in fact, most of the methods in Playwright are async. For example, checkbox, closing the browser, content async, filling the text box, getting the focus, going to a page, hovering, all these methods you can see over here all are async. So understanding asynchronous programming is core important concept while learning the Playwright itself in more efficient fashion. But how do we write async code? Well, asynchronous programming in C Sharp is facilitated by the async and await keyword. The async modifier is used to declare a method as asynchronous and a method marked with async can contain an await expression. The await keyword is used inside an async method to asynchronously wait for the completion of a task and it can be used with methods that returns a task or task t. That's the reason why I said that it can contain an await expression. So let's not worry about the task and task of type t too much for now. We'll be talking about that once we get to that particular point. But for now, async and await are the keyword which are used in combination to perform an asynchronous operation or to make a method as an asynchronous method. So let's talk about a synchronous code first. So this is what I was talking about the web client as I told you. You can see that in this code, we have a fetch data method, which is going to perform a web client to call or to download a URL and get the value out of it. So you can see that this is a completely synchronous code. There is no async keyword, there is no await keyword, and this is an entirely synchronous code for now. 
And once we call this fetch data method within our code, you can see that we have two call operation happening and we are then going to perform an writing of the response in the console.write line, something like this. And this is going to give us the response for us, whatever is coming out from the response one and response two. So this is quite straightforward, right? But the problem in here is that what if the get product by ID of one is going to take too much of time and get products is going to return as things much, much faster. What do you think the output is going to be? Well, what happens in the synchronous programming is that it is going to block the response one and response two same time because it is going to wait for both the operation to complete. It won't write this operation for you instantly because you have called response one, response two, and you have called the right line in the third line of code. And because the first line of code is already slow, the second line is not going to execute. So basically the console.write line is going to be blocked by the main thread and it is entirely going to be not printed at all. So this is how the blocking of the code happens. And that is the real problem with the synchronous programming language. I'll quickly show you a demo so that you can understand what is this synchronous programming problem that we have got. So this is a simple console based application and I'm going to be using a writer IDE over here, but you can use Visual Studio 2022 or VS Code or even use whatever IDE that you are familiar with. Doesn't matter really, but the whole idea is we wanted to see how we can write the asynchronous programming over here. So for that, I'm going to create a folder as sync demo and I'm going to create a class called as sync web client and I'm going to write a method for the fetch data as I was showing you on the slide over here and I'm going to be adding a web client of web client is equal to new of web client and I'm going to write a try catch block over here. So basically I'm going to say return the web client with a download string URL and I'm going to catch an exception if there is going to be any exception happening. That's all this method is going to be doing. And once this is done, I'm going to be writing a method to call this fetch operation. So what this operation is going to do is I'm going to say public static void demo sync HTTP client. So basically what this method is going to do it is it is going to make two synchronous call. So the first call is going to be var response one, which is going to call the fetch data and I'm going to paste the URL of our application. So basically I'm going to use the source code of our application, which is attached within our course itself. So you can just use the same source code. So you can see that this is the EA web app and this is the product API. So once you start running this application, it is going to run the product API, which is going to give you an API of the application. The change which I have made just for the demonstration purpose is that I have made the get all products method implementation to have an sleep of 5000 seconds. So I have made intentionally so that this particular API is going to take so much of time. So what I really mean about this is that once I execute this whole code, you will notice that it is going to spin up the application over here. And within this particular API, if I just go and try out this particular API, like get product by ID, something like this, you can see that the response is quite faster. But if I call the get products and if I hit execute, you will see that it is going to keep loading because it is just going to mimic as if that this particular API is quite slower, but it is actually faster, but we just have added a thread dot sleep there. So this is the one which I wanted to show you about the blocking context of the program or the blocking thread of this particular program. So the first API which I was talking about is going to be this one. So you can see that this is going to be quite faster. So I'm just going to paste this URL over here. And I'm also going to write one more response too, but this time it is going to be get products, but not the get product, something like this. And now I wanted to print the both the value as I showed you on the slide over here. There we go. So this is how the code is looking like. Now I wanted to call this particular code. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say sync web client dot and then I'm going to say demo sync HTTP client. That's it. And now let's try to execute this particular code. So once I execute this particular code, 
you will notice that it is going to perform the calls over here. So the first line has been printed and you will see that both response one and response two got printed same time. And the reason why they both printed same time is because it is blocking the first output as well for us over here. And then it is printing both the value together until the second operation is completed. And this is all happening because of the blocking nature or the synchronous nature of our code. And that's why we need to perform this asynchronous programming, which is going to run both these operations asynchronously and make our life much, much easier, which we'll be discussing in our next lecture so that you can understand how we can write or how we can make this whole synchronous code into an asynchronous code.